Hello and welcome to the Business Octopus, where we talk about all things sales, marketing, and technology. I am CRM and Marketing Automation Specialist, Avon at Relevate, and all around good guy. And today I am joined by Scott Cundall from Mage3, uh, here to talk about your LinkedIn sales strategy and your captivating one-liner, as well as some other cool little tricks that you can do on LinkedIn. Welcome, how are you doing? Avon, thank you so much, mate. Good to be here. No worries. So yeah, we were chatting a little bit before and we're talking about, um, you know, everyone's got just getting pummeled on LinkedIn. Uh, Maybe they're out there trying to win some business for themselves. And, you know, it's a really mass market out there. There's a lot going on. Um, What are people doing wrong on LinkedIn? Oh man, what a question. What a question. Okay. So the first thing is, uh, in my opinion, and this might be a little bit bold and quite provocative, but they're spending too much time posting, too much time writing content, uh, getting three views and uh, one share and uh, and uh, two likes. And the two likes is your sister-in-law and your best mate who go, well done, great article. So you're spending a lot of time writing content, but you're not creating a one-on-one relationship. Uh, the one-on-one relationship is the most powerful thing you can do on LinkedIn. And the greatest tool that LinkedIn has at the moment right now for doing that is this incredible thing that's been around for so many years. We all use it and don't realize its power. It's called Direct Messenger. I think, um, uh, you know, you can definitely get stuck in the content wheel. And, and, you know, every time you post something, all you're doing is building the SEO of LinkedIn. Uh, And and so they get the boost and the benefit, but you not necessarily as much. And, um, you know, we've seen it on other platforms like Facebook, uh, where your reach gets uh, severely limited because you know they've they want to monetize that. Uh, we've seen a lot of things change on LinkedIn in the last few last little while. So how do you use direct message to to engage? Right. So that's the one of the keys, Avon. So we developed a tool called the Captivating One Liner, uh, and the Captivating One Liner is also an ebook that I wrote. And it is really about one line that can really ignite your sales and marketing. Now, the way to stand out is, first of all, and this is, again, might sound a bit provocative, but challenging the status quo is you don't talk about your your product or service. You don't even mention your product or service. If you want to stand out, you've got 12 to 15 seconds. And once again, we recommend direct messenger. You've got 12 to 15 seconds to get somebody to go, this is not a spammer. This is somebody credible. And I might just give them the time of day. So the captivating one-liner identifies the target audience and the key pain point of that target audience. And it puts it into one line. And that one-liner becomes a tool where all you do is you go out to them and say, hey, Avon, Scotty here. I've just written an article specifically for your industry entitled One Line. I'd love to connect and share it with you on LinkedIn. And that starts to become the foundation for the direct messages thereafter. I think that um, when people get a lot of these sort of messages, it it can be a little bit difficult. So you're saying like the first message and and you don't have to go into too much detail here, but obviously, yeah, you've got to grab that attention and, you know, you're being bombarded with information. Um, There's even an acronym come out, TLDR, too long, didn't read. So uh, I think, you know, it's very easy in the direct message. You only get, was it 300 characters? So is it that first message or are you talking about a little bit more detail? No, the first message. So, so let me give you an example, right? So we've got a client uh, and the client uh, makes these beautiful steel balustrades um, and they've got this brochure with these glossies, cork, big, beautiful offices with these staircases going up and they used to shove their brochure out into their faces of every man, woman, child, dog and, uh, and cat because you're a cat lover, Avon, I know, um, and go and wonder why nobody's responding. So we said, let's just sit down for a second and captivate the, their attention with one line. First of all, who are you looking to target? And they were looking to target architects. And we said, what's keeping architects awake at night? There's a lot of issues around security because some of the balustrades aren't designed properly and children are getting through underneath and there's a bit of a problem. So we created a captivating one-liner called saving lives one balustrade at a time. So all we have to do in the direct messenger when you reach out to somebody on LinkedIn is say, hi, my name's Susan. I've just written an article specifically for architects entitled Saving Lives One Balustrade at a Time, specifically addressing the issue around balustrade safety. So Saving Lives One Balustrade at a Time became a completely different approach, and that's what brought the whole community together around them. That would be an example of a captivating one-liner. And yes, direct message, um, acceptance message, you share the article, you share the clicks, you track the clicks, there's a whole automation and uh, semi-automation 
and measurability around that, which we can get into if you want. But the key essence is this. Don't talk about your product or service. Build your own personal credibility so you are the author of the captivating one-liner and the content that goes with it. Mm. And finally, use it as a tool to show them that you understand their pain. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's in copywriting, there's a, a, an acronym that I like to follow. And I, I generally give it to everybody I can in terms of writing engaging emails and text messages and, and blogs or whatever. It's a very simple uh, passer. So problem, aggravation, solution, social proof and action. And I think, you know, in line with that too long didn't read kind of thing, there is a pattern or there is a way, there is a formula that you can use to create a very skimmable, quickly consumable, attention grabbing piece. And I think that, you know, that's what a lot of people are missing. They get to, you know, three, four paragraphs, eight links and 20 little attachments. And they wonder why no one's clicking their, um, their, their connection. Or maybe in the first connection, they said something like, I want to connect with you on a deeper, more personal level. And then they hit you with the sales message. So it's almost like that first message became a lie. So I totally agree. That's that, and I really love your. Uh, I didn't quite grab the acronym. I think you said PASA, but yeah. I love it. That's exa that, that's exa that's exactly right. I think the, the 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 secret is though that the content must be written by you, the person. Yeah. The first question you asked me, Avon, was the was what are people doing wrong on LinkedIn? And one of the key issues is they're hiding behind a brand. Mm. It's your human. LinkedIn is actually person to person. Uh, especially so, so the focus when you're connecting with people should be around you so if you have you know some of the examples that i told you um another one would be uh seo lord's prayer please god don't make me ask uh, please god don't ask me to do seo on shopify so seo people hate doing seo on shopify but what matters is that the content that you write is written by you as an author and you you personally build your credibility and respect and mm -hmm. if you do that because people buy from people, you're now getting one step closer to getting in that door. Mm. So as far as uh, standing out, so it's, uh, you, you, you do it from, like you said, that first few seconds, that, is, that, that next, like, uh, I, I think it's sort of like a bit of an expectation management in terms of, you know, if that first message says the problem that you solve people, there's a, there's a term in copywriting, it's like, People will jog to pleasure, but they'll uh, uh, sprint away from pain. So it's it's kind of like you got to determine the thing that's going to like turn the knife, make them feel that that thing that make them want to solve it. Like you said, uh, it's all human. So for me, I'd, I'd say it's about triggering emotion, triggering um, some kind of reaction out of somebody without being too graphic or too um, you know in your face. But would you tend to agree with that or disagree? What are your thoughts? Both. Yeah, I do. Well, sorry, not both agree, disagree. I, I agree, but I agree, on, agree with you on both counts, the sprinting and the, and the jogging. And yeah, so the pain point, but it's important not to come across as being a fear driven, um, yeah. you know, to, to really go after the pain. And a lot of people sell fear. And I, I, I'm not a huge believer in that completely, although fear, fear is important. I mean, we did one for, for a company, which, which is a bit tongue in cheek, um, which was for pain companies. And the captivating one liner uh, was pain companies. Reading your online content is dull, lifeless, and colorless. It's like watching paint dry. Uh, you know, it's that kind of provocativeness, and you can almost be a little bit humorous. Um, we did a really, really technical, captivating one-liner um, for a data center, which is really technical, and you won't understand it if you're not in data centers. Um, but it was uh, about the environment, so and, and the amount of energy that data centers are using. Uh, and it was DCIM. Your PUE, your PUE is terrible. Greta Thunberg is investigating. Uh, so it was kind of like, listen, man, you, you, you're in your data centers. Um, you, guys are, um, you guys are using a lot of electricity, a lot of energy, and Greta Thunberg's coming after you. Yes. The article itself is not about the software that they're selling for data centers, which is what they're trying to sell. The yes. article is about the pain point, which is we need to take in the environment seriously. So you, 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 can, you can be fearful but don't use fear deliberately to scare the daylights out of somebody to buy your product. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, you, you can definitely go very far the other way. I know that um, there was the, the, doing research and focus groups around things like marketing. There was an agency that did a, um, uh, an ad to combat the use of meth or ice. Um, and so by creating this anti-drug ad, they're basically given, um, these all this graphic material and when they market tested it 
they said that the user actually wanted to shoot up after watching the ad. So um, that like you can totally push the wrong message. And I think it's a really delicate thing for me. I would just say, you know, ask three people, not your friends and family. Like you said, mum will tell you yeah. it's great. Um, but if you ask three or four randoms in the street, one, whatever, two is a coincidence, three is a trend. If they all say X, Love that. then you're probably on the right path or wrong path, whatever the yeah. result is from that that research. Yeah. I love that. Avon, three is a trend. That's yeah. you, you got to, you got to, you got the makings of a captivating one liner right there. I like it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll take some copious notes. Uh, you've said that once, <laughs> but I don't believe you yet. So <laughs> how do you, how does one get leads out of LinkedIn? I get asked this all the time. Now I do the CRM side and people are always saying, how do I get stuff from my LinkedIn into my CRM? Yeah, well, all right. So, so Avon, you're you're one of the foremost um, experts, uh, having 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 known you for a while. not that long, but but long enough now, and, and your credibility to know that you understand the CRM game really well. And where we come in is, what do you put into that CRM? How do you get stuff into the CRM? Uh, and that's essentially the question that you're asking me now. Um, and where, where does the data come from? Uh, okay, so obviously it depends on your industry, but let's assume that uh, your audience is on LinkedIn because that's our specialty. We, we, we're not a digital agency. We're not going to go out and, 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 and do Facebook ads and that kind of stuff. So, so I'm sure you've had other guests on your show that, that specialize in that because that is one way to get them into your CRM. Mm. From a LinkedIn perspective, okay, so as I mentioned before, your LinkedIn profile is really powerful. Direct messenger is the most powerful thing you can do. Your captivating one liner will captivate your audience, but you've got to know who your audience is. Now, the new LinkedIn limits are 100 invitations per week. That's 400 per month. That's huge numbers. If you just go out, right, and you use your LinkedIn to invite the right people, you use the captivating one liner in your message, that you're not going to hurt your reputation which is a mistake people make. If you spam people, your reputation's dead. If you try to harvest all the email addresses from LinkedIn using one of those major scraping tools, throw them into your CRM and, and spam them, not only will you gr gr grievously do harm to your reputation as a brand, you're gonna destroy your email sending reputation. And your email sending reputation is almost as important as your brand reputation because your emails won't get delivered. All right, so how do you get from LinkedIn? You start inviting people normally, but we've developed a little tool that sits on top of LinkedIn that watches what you do. So while you're doing your invitations and sending your, inv your, your, your messages, et cetera, et cetera, it's pulling that data, but it's pulling the right people. So if you've got a thousand LinkedIn connections, right? You've got your first degree and you've got new invitations you're inviting. Our app watches you do that. You just quickly push a button. I want this guy, I want this guy, I want this guy. I've invited these people. The app takes it. You can then, when you're ready, push the push to CRM button and it will manually, one by one, push those into your CRM and then trigger the automation that you're an expert in Avon and start trigger, trigger, triggering that automation process. Mm. Or you can export your database, not your whole LinkedIn database. I want to make that clear. Just the database that you've created separately on LinkedIn as our tool watches you, export it and then upload high quality people who are already warmed up into your data, into your CRM, and now you can start using them. That would be my approach. So there's a bit of manual work, and I'm begging you guys, please put some manual time into it. Don't just use a scraper, scrape it all, and think, I just don't want to spend time, so I'm going to spam everybody. Spend time doing it, doing it properly. Does that answer your question? Um, yeah, and I probably want to build on it a little bit in terms of um, when people ask me, I think their intent is kind of like, I don't know the person, I don't have their email address. I want to pull that out and then spam them. I want to put it in a, a thing and just email, 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 email. And what you've said there kind of helps to uh, uh, consolidate and to confirm what I've said about things like, you know, your email deliverability, definitely. And, you know, if you've got, if you're looking for a needle in a haystack, don't pile more hay on top of it. Don't just go in and look for, crap that you're going to have to sift through you're going to need to go and you know like the whole point of crm is to qualify to um, improve the quality of data not necessarily the volume to then allow you things like lead scoring measures so that you're spending time because you've only got 24 hours a day um, you know spending more time on the things that matter in terms of calling people who are already somewhat interested are your right target market have the money 
you know, there's a very simple acronym. I seem to be full of acronyms today. Uh, it's called BANT, uh, B-A-N-T. So budget, authority to make decision, need and timeline. If they don't have those four things, you are wasting your time. Love it. Yeah, we, 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 you've got a four letter ac- acronym. Ours is uh, don't put crap into the app. No crap in the app. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I totally agree with you. Um, and I, I, yeah, I, y- y- you're on the money. And then, once again, look at LinkedIn. LinkedIn has got most of that data in your acronym. If you're going to know if they've got the buying power, if they're the right kind of people, they're there. Timeline is a little bit different. But here's the thing with a captivating one-liner. Um, if you're an SEO person and you get, somebody uh, uh, contacts you and says, I've just written an article called uh, SEO, Lord's Prayer SEO, please don't ever make me do SEO on Shopify. And you know what's going on. You do SEO on Shopify. You click on it. You're not going to click on it if you, unless you're experiencing pain doing SEO on Shopify. So by clicking on your captivating one, not one liner to reading it, you've told the you've told the guy or the owner right that you have that pain. So mm. you've already started generating not just generating interest and credibility, but you know that individual's got a pain. You might not have got all the way to timeline yet. You've still got to do a bit more work. But you've already started to score those leads. You used the term lead scoring, which I like, that mm. if they're bobbing up with it, got a higher lead score because they've actually identified and engaged with content that you've written, mm. they've pre-qualified themselves already. And I, I think that's, that's um, you know, really important. One thing I try, I have to work in analogies because a lot of times people don't understand the technical speak. And I've had a couple uh, ideas for ones like the haystack, don't put more hay on. The other one I'm thinking is like, you're saying the bobbing up and down, you know, you're in the, the arcade and you've got the, the mole game where they pop up and you've got to hit them with a the hammer. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Don't those. try and hit the ones inside the box underneath. Only hit the ones that are popping up. Now, you know, you, you, you're not wasting time hitting the side Perfect. of the box for no reason. Spot on. No, I love it. No, that's, that's right. So you've got to, you've got to go for that. So that's right. So now you as a, you as a the business owner or a salesperson, you do not have time to prospect um, and they hate prospecting. Now you can do a lot of automation with the prospecting or at least semi automation or speeding it up. So, you know, with the LinkedIn, the captivating one liner, you're inviting people, you can get someone else to do it. We can do it. You can use an app to do it, whatever, right? You can automate part of that process. I'm not against automation or semi automation. As long as the content is soft and gentle, non spammy, captivating one liner, et cetera, that's great. But you as an individual business owner or salesperson, you must only spend time with high quality people. You spend the time messaging, you spend the time phoning, you spend the time writing emails, whatever. The personalization is with high quality people only. Don't waste your time with anyone else. If, you've, if you're selling uh, you know, the latest uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, V8 sort of thing, looking nice and, and it's got a lot of street appeal, now, you're probably going to get a lot of interest. You're going to get interest from people like uh, uh, uni students and, and people who, who have this vision of themselves in the future. And so, you know, they're going to go to the website. They're going to look like really interested people. They're going to go and get um, the, the brochures. They might go and ask for a test drive, but they've got no money. And so you don't want to spend your time with those people. Whereas if you're a salesperson, you know, if you, particularly if, if it's a long sales cycle or if you have to spend a lot of time, you know, half an hour, hour on a phone call just to, talk through some questions, there are plenty of tire kickers and people just want to absorb, 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 and then never, never go and eventuate into a sale. And I think, you know, you've got to strike the right balance. I see I've sort of triggered a bit of oh. frustration there, but yeah, you know, like if you're, if you've got that sort of um, someone in that zone where they're, they're, they're interested and they're, they're doing something about it, then, you know, that is, that's, that's the goal. Otherwise, you're just wasting, you're spinning your wheels. 100%. We call them professional time wasters, PTWs. Yes. There's an acronym for you. <laughs> <laughs> not fair that, it's not fair that you're doing all the acronyms today. Uh, <laughs> totally. Yeah, you, you've, got, you've got to get away from those people. And, um, and once again, that qualification process can help. You can't get away from it completely, but... But yeah, you're right. You've got to, you've got to do that. And, and, and the approach does that because, you know, if you're going out on LinkedIn and, and cheap as I could talk all day on this and there's, there's other discussions, but there's something I call the sales conversion gap, right? The sales conversion gap sits squarely between your prospecting and getting in front of the client to close the deal. 19 out of 20 of your, of your clients or your future customers are stuck in the gap. I call it being trapped in the gap, right? They are people that want what you have, need what you have, would probably be able to afford what you have, but they're not going to jump into your lap. Your problem is you don't know who they are. 
right? So if you go on to LinkedIn and you've measured the process from start to finish, you do know who they are because they've clicked on your one liner, they're opening your emails, they're following the pain, but they've never reached out to you. Mm. Those are the guys you proactively reach out to them. That's where your money is. It's in that gap, but you've got to identify it first. And that's where your kind of CRM uh, comes into play. And I think, you know, you're talking about like, uh, we'll say like the, the funnel or the, the ADA model or something like that. You know, everyone's got a, a methodology or a version or they put their own brand or feel on it. But, um, you know, the core principles are in most university textbooks, are awareness, interest, desire and action. Yeah. You can break those down into sub components if you want, but the core is those sorts of things. So, so you've got, you might be spending money on Facebook, you might be spending money on Google, you know, but if you don't, if you're not converting them, if you're not moving them down, if you're not able to create some form of all, like semi-organic or, or general interests in uh, broadly, then you don't really have a business. You just have a job at Facebook or Google. So, I, I, and I think yeah. being able to have and nurture those relationships from start to finish could be that, yeah, maybe that first interaction happened because of, you know, Facebook book or Google, but then, you know, they got a little bit further down the funnel because, you know, you messaged them on LinkedIn. Then maybe you, uh, you, you got in a conversation somewhere, they absorb some of your content, they watch. So Google have a concept of 7-11-4, seven hours, seven hours of content over 11 touch points across four channels. Hmm. And I then, did not know that. And, and as people go down that pipeline, like, being able to track, like you said, like we've had people that, you know, from first interaction through to close has been 18 months or two years. Now we've been able to track exactly when that started and how that finished and all of the triggers that happened along the way. And from the outset, it wasn't like, I'm not ready. It was, uh, uh, sorry, I don't want to work with you. It was just, um, I'm choosing you, but I'm just not ready yet. And when I am ready, it's, there's no question of who's going to do the, the job. So Absolutely. Yep. Nine years, by the way, that's my record. Nine, took years. nine years to get a customer following me. Yeah. That's how long I've had wow. seven years. I've had five years regularly. Yeah. I don't and think I've tracked you, that you, far. You, That's another thing, Avon, which I think you've allu alluding to. Um, it's a long game. Mm. What we do and what we teach our clients, what we work with them. And we, you know, you mentioned the, the lead conversion. That's another problem all on its own. We sit with our clients one-on-one -on -one and just make sure and help them and coach them and nurture them. You're getting leads you're going to leave them and do nothing. Nothing's going to happen. You've got to be coached. How do you outreach? What do you do? So that, that, that is so important that you've got to be prepared to jump on those leads because otherwise you get this beautiful CRM yeah. full of stuff. Nothing ever converts because you haven't actually taken the, taken the time to do it. Well, yeah, you're spending time on the ones that uh, are no good because you've just got a pile of uh, unqualified uh, too much crap in your app. Uninterested crap in your app. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that, <coughs> excuse me, um, you mentioned that, you know, building relationships. I think people, uh, people that want to scrape, people that want to pull that stuff out and then, you know, run them through an email sequence, they think they hit a button, you know, whether it's the Google ads button, the, the Facebook ads button or the bulk spammy email button that they're going to get a client. And, and uh, that is totally the wrong approach. You know, like we talk about brand advertising. You just look at all the big businesses, you know, they spend millions and millions of dollars on an ad that just gives you a feeling. It doesn't say buy this, do that. You know, you, you, Snoop Dogg on menu log ads does not translate to direct sales. It doesn't translate. It's not a call to action. It's, it's, a, it's a feeling. It's a thought. It's an idea. It's a relationship that you form with the brand. And it's got nothing to do with the, you know, um, I, sent, I sent you an email, therefore you should be my customer. Completely. And I want to reiterate, Ava, on the personal side of things, the personal brand, because as, as, you, as you know, LinkedIn, that's kind of my, my specialty, LinkedIn and email, that's all we do. Um, the, the LinkedIn side is personal. It's not, you, you don't hide behind your brand. That direct messenger, the, the captivating one-liner, uh, you're the author. You, you, people buy from people. So you have to build your own personal credibility and your personal credibility and respect in that audience is absolutely paramount. Yeah, absolutely agree. Well, you know, I think we've, we've covered a lot of uh, really good ground here. And I think um, if anyone's listening to this and you're thinking that you're going to uh, uh, need any kind of work or, or, or need any kind of engagement with people on LinkedIn, that you should definitely have a chat with Scott. Now, if, you're, if you want to find out more about um, the uh, platform that he works with, you can go to mage3.com. Um, and as always, the website and the uh, LinkedIn URL for Scott 
or for our guests in general, will be in the uh, in the comments section as you go through. Um, so if you would like to, if you have any more questions for, for me or for Scott, you can reach out to us at relevate.com.au. Um, and otherwise, if, uh, if you I hope you enjoyed the episode and take care. Avon, what a pleasure, mate. Thank you.